And so it really, it changes your perspective on is gold really going up and down or is the dollar going up and down? And mm -hmm. we would postulate it's the dollar because yeah. of all the machinations that go on and the, the crazy economy that's been developed. Gold is, is the solid rock that, that we, we recommend you, you base your economic life on. Today, we are fortunate to be joined by Mark Hilton. He's the president and CEO of Alpine Gold. We're gonna talk about Alpine Gold Exchange, their relationship with UPMA and Goldback, but first, we're going to talk about the gold price and the silver price. Mark, on behalf of myself and my viewers, welcome to Ron's Basement. Thank you, Ron. It's great to be here. I appreciate the chance to, uh, to speak with you and, and with your, uh, your followers. Yeah, my, my audience is keenly interested in Alpine Gold Exchange, UPMA, uh, and Goldback. It's, those are three really hot subjects, so I think we'll have some good information for them regarding, uh, re regarding them. What do you think about the current situation in the gold and silver market? Any, any thoughts on what's been going on lately? Yeah, absolutely. We, we get this question a lot from folks is, um, you know, where, where's gold going to go? Should I buy now? Should I buy later? And, and we, we are pretty clear that we're, we're not, uh, our, our function is not as financial advisors, uh, and, but we do have, uh, we follow the trends and we, um, we've seen, and, and we've done a lot of studying, go to a lot of conferences and so forth. And, and I would say that the most interesting thing I think that happened last year was that we had record inflation by the government's own numbers. We were, you know, approaching that double, double digit rate, which as we know is, is, is pretty much manipulated to be as low as possible. So the actual inflation rate was, was much higher. Yet, when you look at the price of gold, because the normal sort of commentary is gold is a hedge against inflation. Therefore, if there's a lot of inflation, gold price should go up. What we saw last year was that gold went up for a while in Q1, um, and then it dropped in, in the end of Q2 into Q3. Then it started to make a little rebound, and it basically ended up flat year over year. Now, this quarter, or Q1 of this year, it's gone up again. Now it's kind of stabilizing. So it's, it's been interesting and it's not, it's not a direct correlation to short-term inflation. It's a high correlation to long-term inflation. So if you look over the 50 years since we've been off the gold standard, gold has gone up an average of 8% a year. Um, and so that I believe is the true measure of inflation. Um, now, if you look year to year, it's not 8% every year. Some years it's 20, 30%. Some years it's flat. Now, what happened last year was actually very fascinating because it really has more to do with um, international um, sort of, um, you know, forces on the, the value of the dollar. Um, so there's, a, there's an index, the dollar index, which is based on the demand of the dollar in international markets. So it it, it goes up and down. And what we saw last year is it went up about 20%. Now, a lot of people feel this was because there was a, um, the Fed rose, rose interest rates a lot, right? So if, you, uh, if you're in a foreign government and, or a foreign entity and you're, um, you're needing to take out, um, you know, or invest somewhere in a, in a quote, safe place, are you going to invest in your own bonds from your own government that's paying basically zero or negative in some cases um, to, you know, four or five percent from the U.S.? So there was a big demand on the U.S. dollar um, debt, essentially overseas, which drove the dollar up 20 percent. So that is um, that is really what was happening last year. If you look at the dollar, at how gold performed against the euro or the yen, or the pound, it did very well last year, as you would expect. Um, so in a normal environment, when you don't have these swings of relative currency values internationally, you will see the gold correlate well with inflation. But that was an interesting scenario. I uh, thought we'd mention to your, to your audience that um, it's the higher short-term correlation is actually to the value of the dollar um, and that index. Um, 
So I'll pause there. Does that make sense? Yeah, that um, makes yeah, that yeah. makes perfect sense. I like to, to to explain it or tell it to my viewers that the gold actually did pretty well when you consider the headwinds that it faced last year. <laughs> uh, the, the the rising relative dollar. The other very interesting thing you brought up was the fifty year period. You know, it dawned on me a couple of days ago. I was thinking about the last fifty years and. Over the last 50 years, you know, generally speaking, the United States was in, for, for a big portion of that, in pretty good financial shape. Also, <clears throat> during that period, we were kind of the hegemony power of the world, right? We were kind of the dominant world power. Despite that, over the last 50 years, the U.S. dollar has lost a lot of its buying power. And I thought, boy, you know, where we stand now, because it feels like there's just major geopolitical financial change going on in the world. As I look out over the next 50 years, I think, how will gold fare? How will the dollar fare? I mean, if it didn't do well, really over the last 50, gold did well, but the dollar didn't do well over the last 50 years. What did the next 50 years look like? Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, totally. I, I think that's a great way to look at it. The, these long-term trends that really tell us a lot. And, mm -hmm. you know, you think about the dollar was, uh, the gold gold was thirty five dollars to an ounce in 1970, and now let's say it's two thousand, right? So that is that's that's not that the gold has gotten any more valuable, and you can buy more with gold. It's about the same, right? An ounce of gold mm -hmm. will buy about what you could buy an ounce of gold, you know, back in 1970, but the dollar is vastly undervalued. Uh, not yeah. undervalued. It's just it's just been um, you know depreciated and devalued over time. And that is normal. That's what happens with fiat currency. And you know, if you're if you're taking out a debt in dollar, that's actually good news, right? So over time, you know, the value of what you owe goes down in relative to the money that you you know your income. So you know, I, I would, I think you, you got to think about where do I want to use dollars. It's it's not a great place to invest, but it's a great place to borrow if you can get somebody <laughs> to loan right. you the money at that rate and then you hold it and you can actually do pretty well but um it's not a good place to store your your wealth right the yeah. dollar because you always have that that headwind of inflation and devaluation and so what we tell people is you know we offer the ability to to lease their gold uh, holdings with us and get a return and that return is between two and three and a half percent and the initial gut reaction is wow i could do better than that you know going to the stock market, you know, it's like fine, you know, but to compare that, you really have to overcome inflation first with a dollar based investment and then uh, and then make a, re a real return above that. Whereas with gold, that's arguably you're starting with a real return. Um, you know, aside from these dynamics we just talked about of, of the dollar, which are kind of short term things. So I would say if there is a 10 percent inflation, and you're getting a thirteen, a three and a half percent return on your your investment uh, through a lease. That's kind of the equivalent of a thirteen and a half percent, which is essentially a risk free investment. Where can you get a risk free investment in the stock market paying thirteen and a half percent? You just can't, yeah. right? So it's it's really a, a much better uh, investment. We're probably getting ahead of ourselves, but I just you know it's yeah. it's, it's it relates to this conversation about you know, these relative values and how to think about it. Yeah, and, and, you know, that uh, I think it's interesting. There was a recent Gallup poll that was released and uh, gold was rated in 2023 by Americans as the second safest uh, investment class. It was above stocks, above bonds and above savings accounts. Real estate was the only thing that was above it. And 26% of Americans uh, made that rating for gold in the previous year, 2022, that number was 15%. So it seems like a lot of our fellow Americans are maybe just maybe starting to wake up. <laughs> That's good. And, you know, it's interesting that those two are so close because we kind of think of gold as portable real estate. Mm -hmm. It comes out of the earth, right? And you, you do some improvements on it by turning it into a gold back or into a coin, just like you do with real estate, you make improvements and it, you, you, you're able to keep that that kind of premium. Uh, real estate is exposed to these fluctuations, is you know probably more so than gold. But um, yeah, it's it's fascinating, and they're both good investments for sure. And 
and, and, and real estate's a little less portable than gold as well. <laughs> Just, <right>? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hard and, to put a, a little, a lot riskier. You know, we've had a lot of people who are in real estate and it's like, I'm tired of dealing with this. You know, I, you know, yeah. if you're in real estate and let's say you're, you're like a landlord, you got to think about tenant stuff, you know, getting sure. people out that don't pay. <laughs> You're, if you're in gold, you just forget about it and you go have a vacation. You don't have to worry about, you know, what's what's happening with my gold. Just put it in a safe place. You're getting a return. It's growing. Life's yeah. easy. You, know? yeah. you so, can you can you can rest on five thousand years of, of history. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as the president and CEO of Alpine Gold uh, in your association with UPMA and Goldback, <laughs> how how do you facilitate? you know, average people like myself or anyone else who may be viewing, how do you facilitate their ability to protect their wealth with gold and silver? Yeah, so we we act, you know, we're an exchange. And so we, we um, you know, Alpine Gold Exchange, first of all, I should say is we're a for-profit company and we've essentially been contracted by UPMA to, uh, to run their operations. And so UPMA is a nonprofit association of members. They have a uh, an elected voluntary board of directors. I think you've had one on your show, uh, Charles, Charles Lewis. Lewis. Um, so it's a great bunch of, of, you know, patriots that are really care about this, that have come together and they're volunteering their time um, in on behalf of other members. So to become a member, you basically open an account uh, and you have some balance. To be a member in good standing, you have to have a balance of equivalent of one gold dollar which is today about $40, 40 US dollars. So we, we support them. We also have um, some other for-profit activities such as an e-commerce site that we sell, you know, gold and silver um, directly to the public uh, without, you know, the need to be a UPMA member. Um, but regarding the, what we call the in-network operations of what we do, mm -hmm. that's with UPMA, where folks have, have a balance, kind of feels like a bank. Right. So we, we offer a lot of the kind of banking services. So we, we think of this in three areas, Ron. We we focus on the ability for people to save, store their wealth. We focus on the ability to spend it, uh, because if we focus on, on gold and silver as money, not as piles of, of bullion that you put in a dark closet or you know hide away. So it's it's usable and there's some there's a lot of benefits of, of focusing on that type of money. So all you'll see in our vault is our legal tender um, forms of gold and silver from the U.S. government or the gold back, which is a legal tender instrument. And we can talk about that more, but it, it behaves like legal tender in some states. It is legal tender. Um, so, so can that, I, if I could, can, yeah, can go ahead. I inter interrupt you for one second. Yeah, so please. So your members are the members of UPMA when they when they put their cash in, you only store the gold and silver in the form of American silver eagles and American gold eagles. Is that is that safe? Yeah, basically, that's it. We take that money. We will buy, um, you know, they'll, they direct us what they want. But mm -hmm. we have a very simple set of currencies that we support. It's the gold eagle and the gold buffalo. So. Okay. But if you're holding an account, you're not defining whether you want a gold buffalo or a gold eagle. It, it's okay. it's just one ounce of legal tender gold. It at at the point of withdrawal, physical withdrawal of those metals, then you can tell us, hey, I want eagles or, or I want buffaloes. But they basically cost the same thing. They both have one ounce of of gold in them. In the case of the gold eagle, it's 22 carats, so that means it's got some other metals in there, and that's just for durability. Right. So it actually weighs 1.1 ounces instead of one. So anyway, th those things and then the Silver Eagle. And these are the one ounce versions. We don't go into a lot of different, you know, uh, denominations there. Um, and then the gold back. We have a bunch of different types of gold backs. And these are, you know, one, five, 10, 25, 50 denominations. But when you have an account, it just says the face value of what you have in gold back. So let's say you, you bought a thousand gold backs. It's not saying that you have, you know, um, a bunch of like a hundred tens. It's mm -hmm. just I have a I have a thousand gold back face gold value, gold. and if you withdraw those, you can you can de determine, you know, tell us I want a thousand ones or I want uh, two hundred fives or a hundred tens. You know, 
or okay. any mix thereof. But that's essentially all you'll see in our vault. And that's those uh, all the accounts. We have 100% reserves, which again is very unique compared to today's banks. Sure. But very close to what the old you know banking system was. Um, so we we and we do an audit on this. Um, this is one of the things the UPMA does. They come in and because they, they hired us, right? And it's like we want to make sure you guys aren't you know siphoning off our, our holdings and going on elaborate vacations, you know. So they they have the right to pop in that vault and they count it and they look at the the um, the balance of all the accounts of their members and they say are those two numbers the same and so we have to report on that during our board meetings that we do every four months okay um, so anyway that's that's um uh, in terms of what what we can do for members that's it it's basically save you know store spend but also invest and, and grow so those are the kind of three areas and you know one of the things that i just want to touch on this briefly because i've covered it with charles and uh, adam van but is the fact that that within certain parameters when a member buys and sells silver or gold, uh, the, 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 the price at which that occurs measured in fiat US dollars is mm -hmm. based upon the same formula. So there's a, is it, is it accurate to say a zero spread type uh, arrangement? Yeah, that we, we call it a zero buy sell spread because you normally have, you know, if you're, if you go to the airport and you're going to Europe to, you know, you're going to, you're going to buy some euros. And when you come back, if you didn't spend all those euros, you're going to switch them back in dollars. <clears throat> There's going to be a spread on that day, right? So if you're buying and selling on the same day, you're going to, you're going to lose money. Mm -hmm. You know, you as, you'd lose uh, U.S. federal notes in that transaction. And in our case, what, because we're trying to focus on the ability for people to spend it, we want it to feel like going to a bank. If I put dollar, you know, if I put paper dollars in there and I come back the next day, I can pull out the same number of paper dollars, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's no buy sell spread. Like I sold my dollars to the bank and now they're going to sell them back to me at some different rate. Um, now we, I should point out to your audience that this isn't an unlimited um, uh, capability. We do because we are an exchange and we have to have liquidity. And to be able to provide that, what we're essentially doing is we're acting as the middleman between member A and member B. So member A wants to sell, member B wants to buy. We just arrange that to happen. And so that member member A who's selling is going to get um, a really good price, much better than he would if he were selling it to some coin store um, mm -hmm. who's going to take a spread. And so that's what we facilitate through our exchange. But we, we limit the liquidity uh, or the, the ability to do that for up to $10,000 equivalent um, per um, uh, per month per account. Okay. 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 So that, that's, um, but that, you know, that's designed, that's $120,000 a year, uh, which should cover your grocery bills and your electrical bills. Yeah, that'll, and, that'll cover my expenses. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> if you're living an extravagant lifestyle, we can't help you that. You know, I mean, look at that. look at this. Look at what I'm living in. You're living you know? in a basement. I mean, you know, <laughs> is that your mom's that bear, basement? That bear, <laughs> that bear eats a lot of honey. You know, I, at least 120k a year. Um, very interesting. So, so if, if someone were to make a large deposit and they want silver, um, the price at which they buy it will be determined upon let's say the spot price, spot price plus a premium, just like if you went to a coin shop. But if at some point they decided to uh, sell a portion of that, the price that they get to sell at is, it's not gonna be the same obviously because the spot price will change and maybe even the premiums would change, but it would be essentially calculated in the same manner. Is that, is that an accurate yeah, statement? Yeah. Okay. That, yeah. The, what we do is air, at one time a day, we set our daily rate. So it's like 10 in the morning. Okay. We're, we're looking at uh, <clears throat> essentially what we can, what we can buy and, and uh, from our supplier. And we, you know, there's, there's just a handful of uh, U S mint wholesalers. And so we, we go through them, we get a price and then, we do add a premium on that. That's essentially the, the profit that enables us to operate. And okay. that premium is, 
is determine it competitively. So we look out and see what what is it going in the market, and we're <clears throat> excuse me, we're very competitive in that regard. Okay. So it's not like there's it's not like members are having to pay an extra premium for this this um, benefit. They're paying right. what they would pay if they went to you know AppMax, Jam Bullion, any of these big online places that are are okay. kind of market leaders. So that's that's kind of where it starts. Now now you own it. It's in network. Now, um, if you later want to want to liquidate a portion of that, you can, or if you want to access that, there's a couple of ways of doing it. You can you can say, hey, I just want to liquidate it. Um, and I got some bills I got to pay, and I want to essentially sell it to another member. You know, they can think about it that way. You go, great. Here's the daily rate, and this is the rate that the member is going to buy. Whether they're buying us from us as new metals coming in, or they're buying it from another member, it's the same price. And so um, we, Alpine Gold, make nothing on that transaction, right? That's a, mm -hmm. that's a service that we provide because that's what the UPMA has, um, is essentially, that's how they've designed their system. And so they know that, that we have to make money and they realize that's, you know, that's why we limit it to $10,000 because we, we do make some, a little bit. Of, I mean, honestly, we don't. So let's say you come back, say you had 20,000 in there and you go, I need all 20,000 out. The first 10,000, we're going to give that really good rate. The second 10,000, there is a buy sell spread, but it's not our spread. It's the spread that it's, we take the extra 10,000 and we're going to sell that to somebody else uh, outside of our network. Mm -hmm. And they're going to have a buy sell spread. So whatever we can get, that's what we give the member. Okay. So again, we make nothing on that transaction. The only place we make money is on the initial sale of, of the metals for new metals. Um, if you're okay. buying them for another member or you're um, you're selling them out to the the market in general, mm -hmm. then that's not a profit center for us. Um, so we just try to clarify that to people because there's always a yeah. question like, how, are you guys going to stay in business? You know, how do you how do you keep money? Because I'm, <laughs> I'm putting it with you on to make sure you're a sound financial institution. And, and we are. And so we are, you know, we're profitable, um, not excessively so, but um we we cover our expenses and and we make a little profit. Um, so that's essentially how that works. But that zero buy sell spread is a huge advantage, and it makes it it makes it feel like, and, and it is that gold is money, and I can put it in mm -hmm. my quote bank, um, my gold bank, and I put it in quotes because we're not a chartered bank, um, but we kind of behave like one, and I can pull it out without losing value now it will go up relative to the dollar because the dollar is moving against the, the gold as we discussed earlier but that's not because um you know gold is what worth more it's just the dollar is worth less mm -hmm. or, or vice mm -hmm. versa uh, you know there's times where gold's going to go down and so you're going to get less less dollars if you pull it out at that point um mm -hmm. but in in general for the last five thousand years it's been going up yeah, <laughs> at least the last two hundred when we, you know, since we've had the U.S. dollar <laughs> since since you and I have been alive, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the um, but essentially, once a, a member puts their money into the system, um, see if I can convey this verbally, they're then uh, kind of locked in to the uh, to the to the to the price arrangement. I mean, I know you said you guys make a little bit of money on the up on the upfront uh, purchase. But once somebody, once it's in that system, then when they go to sell or if they need some money for a wedding or whatever the case may be, uh, that the, the sell price will be calculated in the same manner that the buy price was calculated. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Now, yeah. I was, I was going to mention, so I started saying there's a couple ways you can get your money. One, yeah. one is that liquidation event. And, you know, unfortunately, the way the IRS is currently interpreting things is that if you liquidate... If you go from paper to gold back to paper, they're both legal tender. And so you would argue, well, I shouldn't be paying any, any capital gains taxes, but because of the relative inflation of uh, the US dollar, which is what um, taxes are normally denominated in, they're gonna, they're gonna look at that, the IRS agent and say, well, you've made a gain on that. When in reality, um, it's, it's more of a tax on inflation. Um, is what's happening, right? You're you're paying for the fact that the dollar is devalued <laughs> and you've gone right. back into it. So that is a capital gains event. And we, you know, again, we're not we're not reporting that. Um, 
you know, to the IRS directly, but it, it is, we make it clear to folks that this is, you know, if you work with your tax attorney or your tax accountant, that, you know, they will say that's a, that's a taxable event. So that's one option and you just deal with it and you pay the taxes and, and it's great because, I mean, it's not great to pay taxes, but it means that your gold has gone up relative to what you paid for it in U.S. dollars. Um, and that's what people want from investments. Um, the, the other option is to just use that, not actually sell it, just use it as collateral against a loan. And so this is, you know, this is what pawn shops do. Um, and I'm always hesitant to use the word pawn because it kind of gives you this, you know, CD thing. I'm going in there, <laughs> with, you know, dead of night with my watch to get a hundred bucks. But there's some very robust pawn laws that enable people to to use certain assets as collateral and backing to gain, you know, short-term or long-term um, uh, funds. And mm -hmm. so we provide that as well. Now, so anyway, it's all part of the, the yeah. network. And that's a way to say, you know, it's not to say you're not liquidating your metals, mm -hmm. you know, but it, you do have to pay that back. You have to rebuy the metals to extinguish that, that pawn. Mm -hmm. And if you later mm -hmm. decide, you know, I don't want to do that gold's gone up too much or whatever your reasoning, you just tell us and we, we terminate it, but we then sell your metals. Okay. Um, and we just reduce your balance. So it's, it gives you kind of the best of both worlds. You can bet a little bit and say, I think, you know, I don't think gold, because you, the requirement is you have to pay it back in the metal that was pawned. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you, if you pawn a gold dollar or let's say a gold coin, it's worth $2,000 today. Um, you got to pay us a small fee for that. And it's pretty small. You know, it's like two and a half percentage points per year, 2.4. So, I mean, that's, that's a great interest rate. Um, and you can, you, but you, you know, you pay that back. And then if gold goes way up, that means I'm going to say it goes up to $3,000. means I got to come up with 3000 us dollars to buy that gold coin to get out of the pond. At that point, it's probably better just to pay your capital gains taxes and say, you know what, go ahead and sell my, my gold uh, mm -hmm. and, and take that hit. So you know, it'll and, give people and, a choice. And, and when you talk about gold dollars and silver dollars, is a is a gold dollar one twentieth of an ounce? Is that in a it's, in a it's one yeah, it's one fiftieth. So if you actually had a gold coin, US minute, it would say fifty dollars. Oh, that's right. Boy, my math skills, I tell you what. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a yeah. I mean, it's it's a bit and of that's and, and that and that's why because the gold coin will say fifty dollars now. An yeah. American silver eagle says one dollar. So, exactly. okay, okay. And those right. the, you know theoretically those are supposed to be the same. I mean, it's it's actually um, by law the U.S. Treasury is supposed to maintain the relative value of the various forms of legal tender. Okay, uh, I would say that it's been a a complete failure um, yeah. because just what we described a, a gold dollar, you know, back when it was originally put in place, you know, gold dollar was worth a, a U.S. federal note dollar. Right. Mm -hmm. But over mm -hmm. time, the U.S. federal notes have been printed um, and the, you know, the supply has expanded, whereas gold is not because gold naturally limits its, its expansion. And so, that's been a, I would say, a failure of duty uh, from the U.S. Treasury. Um, but as a result, yeah, you end up with this disparity. It's like they're both dollars; they're both U.S. dollars, but mm -hmm. they they're they're worth very different amounts. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, um, the purchasing power. If um, if 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 my wife ever lets me out of the basement, I usually go to the grocery <laughs> store. But usually, she likes to go to the grocery <laughs> store, okay. and uh, and she likes to use a Visa card. So if if if, you know, I can't send her off with four American silver eagles. Is there is there a solution for me and for her where she could bring uh, some type of of uh, modern credit card, debit card type type of uh, arrangement to pay for things? Well, yeah, there's there's actually two ways she can deal with that. First, she it depends on the type of grocery store she's going to. If it's a um, you know. Uh, uh, owned by somebody that you know has their own grocery store and you can talk to them and say you know what well i can pay you in gold what would you think about gold backs which are very mm -hmm. usable ways of and and there are a lot of a lot of uh merchants around the 
the country willing to accept goldbacks, then you're, you know, you can just pull them out of your account directly, spend them as gold. And so now you're just spending money, you know, as gold. And there's no capital sure. gains, there's no tax or anything. That's just so that's that's number one. I'll start with. But yes, we realize that still 99% of merchants today uh don't even know about the gold back. And we're we're trying to fix that. But um you you can uh you know we do have a credit card or I'm sorry, it's a debit card, a loadable debit card that we can either liquidate or pawn. You know, you you make it a choice. Do you want to mm -hmm. You want to pawn a portion, put it on there. If you're pawning it, then you don't have to worry about the capital gains. Or we can just liquidate some small amounts of your of your uh, account. And you just tell us, and in fact, we'll do it automatically for you. Where we'll we'll top it up at the beginning of every month. Let's say you normally spend a thousand dollars. So um, we're going to sell whatever gold we have to and put a thousand dollars on there. Um, okay. and if you say, you know. Uh, we're having a big party going to the store and your wife's like thousand dollars isn't going to do it you know we got a wedding coming up or something i need more on there then you give us a call and we put more on it right so it's um you know but uh, to be clear that's not like it's not holding a balance of gold it's a holding a balance of u.s dollars that we've sold and put on there for you as a service and, and, load, um, so and load loaded on them yeah and it's, it's loaded on there um <laughs> so if i thought i needed two hundred dollars for something i could I could go online or I could call and sell seven silver dollars. Is that, you yeah, know, that'd be whatever about $200. It is, you know, we'll calculate it automatically for you based okay. on the daily rate. But yeah, I say I need $200 to go. Okay. That equals, you know, X number of silver or gold dollars and okay. gold backs. You can, any of those, you know, you, in your account, you can have sort of three sub accounts, actually four, you know, you have paper dollars because that's, that's where you start. And then we start mm -hmm. buying gold, silver, gold backs. You can then, you know, pull from any of those okay. um, to put onto this card. And we just now added the ability for members to request that online. Um, it used to be you had to call in and mm -hmm. have a pain, you know, to get, get a hold sure. of the voicemail. So now you can just request it. It'll normally happen the next business day. So give it a little bit of time because we, we, uh, we get all those requests and then we execute them first thing in the morning. Okay. I've I have a tough question for you when I'm tough, okay. but no. <laughs> <laughs> what about what about the members of my audience who are part of that uh, for lack of a better way to describe it, hardcore? If you don't hold it, right? Like I have here's a three ounce silver heart. I got my wife for Valentine's Day and somehow wound up in my basement. But if you don't hold it, you don't own it. Um, yeah. uh, how how would you um how 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 would you respond to that uh, to that crowd? Well, okay, so that, and that's a great question. I, I would say um, that is an option. And I mentioned we have two sides of our business. We will sell you stuff all day long. You can put mm -hmm. it in your under your mattress and, and you're safe. Um, it's just a matter of how secure do you feel with that. Now, normally we would recommend people carry, keep some at their at their place of residence, you know, but maybe not all of it because, um, you know, it. Why would you need it locally? It's it, it, you know, what what is the point of having it right there? It's maybe to spend it in time of emergency, uh, use it for, you know, uh, if there's um, a real crunch or or say cash is is extinguished by the government or something, then yeah, you might need something. That's why we invented the the gold back was for physical transactions. So you should have some gold back sitting around. Um, we would definitely encourage that. But, you know, it just comes down to um, the risk level, because if somebody comes in and steals your gold, takes your safe or whatever, that's yeah. fine. You've got no yeah. recourse. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of people who buried it in their backyard, you know. Um, I mean, these are sort of Depression era folks, and then they forget where they buried it. <laughs> right. <laughs> so the right. family's out there digging up the garden, trying to figure out. And yeah. so... What we offer, it's a service and there is a fee yeah. for that, right? And that's the vaulting fee is it's in a secure place. Uh, it's audited. You know, it's 100% insured. Mm -hmm. Like the FDIC, which is about 1% insured insurance on, on the actual balances that are in the bank. We have 100%. Um, and so, you know, and we have a very expensive security system to keep people out. And uh, we're 
we're in an area that's a very safe, very good jurisdiction. You know, if you've ever been to Alpine, Utah, you know, we're kind of surrounded by mountains on all sides. So, uh, you know, not an easy place to get in and out of. And right. So, um, all those things sort of um, come to, you know, we'll provide that off that service for you. And, um, you know, there is, if you're a member, you you can request the ability to come look in our vault. You know, I mean, you got mm-hmm. you have to travel here to Utah. Um, you can look in there. You can be on the audit committee if you want. We've had some non non board members do that who just wanted to see it, wanted to make sure it was all there. And so, um, and we do publish those reports or make them available to the members so they could say, all right, I want to make sure that it's all balanced. So it, I think it gives people a peace of mind. Again, it's a service. Now, if you, of course, it, one one cautionary note, if you do want to hold it yourself, um, you're no longer a UPMA member and you don't have the benefits of that zero buy-sell spread. We're not going to buy the, the silver. If somebody walks in off the street, we don't know where they got that. We're not going to give them that same price that we would give a member sure. holding their medals with us. So that's that's another advantage of, of keeping them you know, secure within our network. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And, you know, as I, as I think about a couple of things, number one, just because uh, a, a stacker <laughs> opens an account with UPMA, that doesn't mean that they can't continue to be a stacker, right? right. Um, yeah, it yeah, doesn't, yeah. it doesn't preclude, doesn't preclude that from occurring. And, and the other thing that I, that I want to point out to the audience is, um, you know, just like, if, if I put everything I have, right, I say, Mark, I'm sold, you know, I'm going to write you a check here from the basement today. Every last penny I have, I'm going to put in UPMA. Mm-hmm. I'd be putting all my eggs in, in, in one basket, um, keeping all of your metals at your house. You're kind of doing that same thing. You're keeping all your eggs in one basket. And, and there's a risk associated with that, right? There's a, a theft risk and other things. So it doesn't hurt to diversify. And I want to throw this in before I forget, because I, I was saying this to you offline before we started. I'm not being paid to make this video. I'm not sponsored or anything like that. I, But I, I do sincerely believe based on my level of analysis, and I'm not offering financial advice, but I do think that UPMA and Alpine Gold, when I look at the range of um, the range of, of, of opportunities out there to store physical metals that, that you guys tick more check more of the boxes than anybody that it that it does represent the best overall value uh, that's available. Uh, we appreciate that, and we're, we're glad that you you see that um, that value. Well, that's what we strive for. And I I mentioned to you as well that it's it's wonderful talking to our members as they call in, uh, it, you know, and many of them are like, wow. I, you know, I've never seen anything like this. I'm used to going to a coin store and storing it in my basement or wherever. And this just solves a lot of problems. Um, yeah. And, you know, it gives you choice in currency. Um, you know, we're not out to replace the entire uh, paper-based economy system overnight. You know, we're trying to provide alternatives for people who are concerned about these things and are kind of awoke. A you know, they're, mm-hmm. they're awake to the fact that, that um, there is some abuse going on with, with, but we, we do live in an environment and a, and a world economy where we, where we still need, you know, paper fiat money, unfortunately, but yeah. um, this is a, a way that we can, we can have an alternative and we're, we're proud of the services that we offer. And again, it's, it's really driven by the UPMA and I think the structure that we have is, is very unique. We're not just a, a for-profit company doing our own thing to maximize our profits. We are, you know, providing this service at the behest of the UPMA, um, and so they're they're dictating essentially, or you know, uh, advising us on how we go. Uh, and so it's a it's a collaborative relationship. I sit on committees with members of the board, such as Charles that you have. We talk about emergency preparedness things that are concerning uh, to the group. We have other committees about our bylaws and nomination committees and, and as executive committees. So there's there's a lot of interaction back and forth between us and UPMA. And I think that's what makes us unique um, is that we have that kind of structure. Yeah, and you also mentioned something before we before we started recording that 
that uh, that I thought was that said a lot about the company uh, and about the UPMA that that uh, that the growth that you thought a lot of the growth and the success that that, that that that's been experienced may have been the result of the fact that it wasn't a business that was born out of uh, an immediate desire to make money, to make money, that it was more of a business or a model association that was that was born out of a, a mission to, mm-hmm. to help people uh, store right. their silver and gold. And yeah, that's where it started. I mean, it really started with the um, with the Utah Legal Tender Act mm-hmm. and a recognition that um, that an entity needed to exist to really start to um, support that vision that was was proposed. Um, and I should say that I'm I'm involved. I mean, my my brother Larry Hilton is actually was one of the original. Um, I mean, he's he's not a legislator, but he's a lawyer, and he was the one who sort of got this thing kicked off. He got some legislatures interested in these concepts of sound money got the Utah Legal Tender Act passed, and he founded this company in 20, um, 2012, uh, the North American Monetary Exchange, and was also the driving force behind the founding of the UPMA. So uh, I personally have been involved for about two and a half years, um, because I have a background in, in business management and technology and things. But um, so it, it was really his vision and, and others uh, in those early days where they said, you know, we need to do this um, for our community. And actually, you know, the UPMA used to stand for the Utah um, Precious Metals Association. <laughs> it changed its name after it realized, hey, this is more than just Utah. I mean, we have we have uh, members actually, even outside the United States, we have quite yeah. a few so yeah. you're, you're going to be the world, uh, the world precious metals. Yeah, we're, we're, right? Right. <laughs> Certainly every 50 states we've got members. And, and so it, it was, it started with that vision and it was like, okay, we need a company to do this, you know? And so North America monetary exchange was created um, really just to, to do that. And then we've, there was a, a number of lean years, I'll say, you know, we had investors that basically propped the thing up for a while and, um, mm-hmm because you have to make investments you got to build these platforms and portals and they're not they're not free and and member dues are not going to cover it you know and or or vaulting fees or whatever so there was investment that went into it and it's probably taken you know close to a decade to become quote profitable and uh yeah how many how many members all together well we have um 45,000 wow members yeah Okay, excellent. That's forty five thousand accounts, basically. Um, yeah, there's probably a few where people have multiple accounts, you know. So, okay. uh, but it's it's in that range, uh, and you know, it's like anything. You have some of those accounts hold a lot of the value, uh, mm-hmm. and others are are just kind of dipping their toe in the water, trying it out, and seeing you know, making sure. sure trust us. So it's sure uh, that's varied. But you know, we have. Um, probably close to a hundred million in assets. Um, if you look at the various types of things that are vaulted and so forth. So significant. Um, mm-hmm. I really appreciate your time. I am going to have one final question for you, but before I do that, is there anything I missed? Anything else that you want to mention before we wrap up? Well, yeah. Let me just mention one thing, which is, um, you know, something that we've started to do recently and we're getting much better at is if you think about where do people really hold most of their wealth, it's in retirement accounts. And um, so we've had questions over the years. Hey, can I, are you guys an IRA custodian? Can we, can I put, you know, buy metals and so forth. And so what we've done is actually, we are not a custodian that requires all kinds of regulatory, you know, oversight and so forth. And, and our focus is really on being, you know, um, I won't say invisible, but in, in a low regulatory position um, because all the accounts are held in trust. So every account has that sort of trust protection that you get. And that's, that's also a little known fact is that, uh, in fact, when I was, I joined as a member and I actually put my house and I deeded it to the same trust that I had with the UPMA. Um, and I didn't have to pay a dime for that trust. How much do you normally pay a lawyer to draft a trust for you? Yeah, you know, 
Right. So that's a huge benefit that most folks don't know about. But um, we started working with a third party custodian that and it's a self-directed IRA, uh, essentially company. So um, that has become quite popular with our members. Um, and so it's it's a bit of a process. We've actually hired somebody now full time just to manage it and help people through the process. But that's a great way to, to get into this is you have money sitting there. It might be in the stock market. It might just be doing nothing. Um, if you put it into, you know, through this third party, which is called AccuPlan, uh, mm -hmm. they, you know, they would be the, the custodian and they have the, you know, they have the ability, you can then direct them on where you want to invest as opposed to your traditional IRA custodians, like here's four funds that you can join, right? Right. This has unlimited, you know, and I bought property through my, my relationship with this one and you can buy fine arts and you can buy private equity, uh, but you can also buy precious metals through their partners, one of them being Alpine Gold. Okay. And so a lot of folks will do that. They'll just, they'll move their IRA uh, custodian from whoever they have today over to this AccuPlan who then works with us and we invest. Um, and and in does that go into the UPMA system as yeah. well? Yeah, it does. Okay. So okay. it's so a all UPMA the previous. Account. Okay. Yeah. Everything is, is well, it, so it's a, it's an IRA fund. Right. So mm -hmm. there are some limitations on what you can do. Sure. Uh, you're not going to be spending that much. That's mostly be, to be held. And then when you do take a distribution, you can then just transfer it from that, that account to a, a non IRA account. And then you can spend it and do all those other things that we talked about. Okay. But um, so we, we built a special type of account for that relationship. And that's that uh, the amount that's in there is growing a lot. And so I just want to mention that to your audience that that's, sure. that's a, a, a great option. And it's you get back to that kind of low risk, um, decent return uh, kind of option for you, uh, for your retirement account. Re re recent Gallup poll results, you know, 26% of Americans are, uh, are, are looking at silver and our gold and silver as uh, as the second top safest uh, investment option. Last question for you, Mark, because mm -hmm. uh, I cheated before this interview. I watched another interview that you did and you, I, I love analogies or stories about the the value of gold and silver and you 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 had a great analogy about a lighthouse and gold oh, okay. yeah <laughs> will you share that with or you, can we end with a story because i thought yeah. that was great i'd never heard that before so i, I probably stole that from one of our partners uh I, right. give credit i heard it from keith weiner who uh is uh president and ceo of, of monetary metals so they're mm -hmm. they're about all about um brokering leases and so forth. But anyway, his point was, if you're, if you're out in a boat and you're looking at a lighthouse, that lighthouse is going up and down, right? And so if you, you know, the analogy being the lighthouse is gold and mm -hmm. fiat money is sitting out in the boat, right? Mm -hmm. So you're sitting there going, wow, that, that lighthouse is going up and down. I'm not sure I can trust that thing, right? Um, but if you're standing at the lighthouse, you know, you're on, you're on, you know, rock, solid ground, you yeah. know, solid rock and you're not moving. Um, and the boat, you see the boat bobbing up and down. And so it really, it changes your perspective on is gold really going up and down or is the dollar going up and down? And mm -hmm. we would postulate it's the dollar because yeah. of all the machinations that go on in the, the crazy economy that's been developed. Gold is is the solid rock that that we we recommend you you base your economic life on. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Mark. We we end on a positive note. Solid rock, <laughs> gold, right? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so if if people want to learn more, they can check out Alpine Gold Exchange. Uh, I know the UPMA also has a great website. Uh, any mm -hmm. any other way that they they should try to get in yeah, touch? UPMA.org uh, has a lot of information. Um, Alpine Gold is um is really the the way i mean i you can log into your account or you can sign up an account from either of those those websites they have kind of a different focus but um uh you know goldback has their own account as well um goldback incorporated so that's goldback.com if you want to learn more about that product um, okay so those are the those are probably the main 
sources of information. And you can always call us and ask questions or send us an email. All right. Well, uh, on behalf of my viewers and myself, thank you. You've been very generous with your time and your information. And uh, we will uh, hope to be seeing you again here in the basement. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you.